This is what the talent of a Max, and today, in my opinion, Lewis and Charles, is all about. It's identifying that rotation zone as a constantly moving thing from lap to lap. So it's not something that you can practice on a sim. It's not something that you can measure. It's not something you can even place. It is something that you feel based on everything that's going on around you. And everything that's going on around you may include other cars near you, the DRS effect, where you are, how quickly you're going, obviously, and the other variables like the condition of the track. Has it changed from the previous lap? Crosswind, the heat of the tires. Is that different from the previous lap? Almost certainly is. The grip level of the track surface, has that changed? Almost certainly has. Ambient won't be exactly the same. There may be some fluids on the track, something like that. And then beyond that, the way he's hit the brake pedal, hit the being the wrong word, the way he's initially squeezed the brake pedal, how he's started to slow the car, how he's transferred the weight, how that's gone through the car, what effect that's had, whether he's hit a little bump that wasn't there on the previous lap. All those things come into effect when he's eyeing up the moment is going to have the least possible downside for these really annoying things he's got to do between the straights, which is turn the steering at a certain amount to get the car rotated and then beyond that get the steering absolutely perfect for the diagonal exit he needs in order to lengthen the exit onto the next straight and those are things that he's feeling as Lewis and Charles are and probably a couple of others are sometimes but to imagine any driver to be able to do that every lap for 90 to 100 minutes it's a human impossibility but that's what Max does incredibly well and that's why that's part of the reason he makes it look easy. So he's got this, he's got this ability because he's been doing it for so long and because he was born with it probably just to feel that moment that he knows he has to break into. And it's called, let's call it the transition zone. And always, always it's ahead of the geometric apex. And bear in mind too, when talking about this transition zone that he's eyeing up, that it may well be the transition zone at the first part of a two corner or even a three corner chicane so what he'll be thinking of then is what angle does he want his car to be at at the last part of that chicane as he's coming out onto the straight that is the absolutely critical thing and that may involve additional amounts of steering at certain moments in the first and second parts of a three-part corner or the first part of a two-part corner good example being the chicane at monza and you'll see in slow-mos you'll see drivers like max or Lewis putting on a little bit of additional lock in the middle of the first corner just to get the car perfectly diagonal for the exit and position for what he needs for the exit from two. So what we're talking about in reality is that drivers like Max and Lewis and Charles today, but a number of other great drivers in, in the background, what we're talking about is those drivers not giving in, if you like, to the natural instincts of a racing driver, which is to brake as late as possible and to get on the power as soon as possible. The opposite is what they do. And there's a third element to it as well, which is that racing drivers tend to want to do everything in a hurry, in a rush, get it all done, get the corner out of the way. But what Max does requires a massive amount of mid-corner patience because he's got to get the car to do a lot of stuff. He's got to get it to rotate, and then he's got to make sure that he's got the angle perfect for the exit that he wants, which is two separate things. If he can do it all in one, so much the better, but that's only going to happen perhaps one time out of 10, in my opinion. It's always going to be a two-stage thing. But it requires a tremendous amount of patience of not being on the throttle, of, of feeling as if you're not going anywhere. But the reality is that he's just condensing all the stuff that the longer cornered classic drivers do is condensing it down into this one moment saying right this is the moment when we'll get it out of the way and we'll have to be patient while I do it. I remember taking Frank Williams out to the back um, at Zandvoort one year when Prost was really quick in the Renault he was enjoying a really good period in the Renault Turbo and Prost was driving like that mid corner he was just sitting there doing nothing waiting 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 a lot of people thought at the time oh you know he's anticipating the throttle lag or something but he wasn't he was just waiting mid corner just to get everything perfect and then getting an incredible exit and minimizing the need actually to have to worry about throttle lag because he had the car pass so straight anyway we we're, were out the back and Prost went out and he was and he did exactly that it looked like he was cornering on rails. Mid-corner, there was absolutely no sound coming from the, from the car at all. And it was a quick corner. It was a right-hander. It was that right-hander downhill around the back. And afterwards, I came back. And I said, so what do you think, Frank? What do you think? You know, I was quite keen to get him out on the circuit to watch what was going on. 
And he said, I don't know, was that a quick lap? It was very unimpressive, I thought. On rails, he said. And of course, that was, that is what most people, I think, see, most Formula One people see when they look at a driver doing it absolutely perfectly, as Alan Prost was, as Max does at the moment in a really great racing car. I don't think Lewis is doing it right now. He's, his, his corners aren't quite as short as they normally are in the W14B. But when Lewis was on it, and hopefully will be in the future, in a really, really high, high grip, well-balanced racing car, it was exactly the same. And that's why Carlos Reutemann, another great exponent of short corners, said when he was describing what he felt he said, I can see the exit of the corner before I've even turned into the corner. And that was Carlos saying, the most important thing is the angle that I want the car to be for the exit. That is the most critical thing in, the, in any corner. So it is unspectacular, this, if it's done well, this short corner motoring, it's unspectacular, but it's unbelievably efficient use of the friction circle of tires of the track surface and of course of the car and i think one of the problems with understanding this this way of driving this short corner way of driving is that it is impossible to simulate that you cannot put that onto a simulator it, it, the, the subtleties are much too small the degrees of movement are much too small you can't simulate the difference between five degrees of track temperature and what Max Verstappen is doing to his rotation zone as a result and how he's adjusting things slightly and, and how he's coming perhaps out of the brake pedal pressure a little bit sooner and a little bit more gradually as he's loading up the steering on the next lap. That can't be simulated. And I think that's one of the problems, not one of the problems, I think it's one of the characteristics of short corner driving. It's kind of a mystery at, at how they do it because it's not something in this world in which we live now, a digital world, that we can actually accurately simulate. I don't think we ever will. So let's look at some of the advantages that Max has and Lewis and Charles when their cars are performing the way they want them to within the, the field of operation. But let's talk about Max because he's in so much harmony with, with Adrian Newey and with Red Bull at the moment with the RB19. Let's talk about some of the advantages that he has. The first, and it's an obvious one, is that he actually physically uses less road. If you look at what he's doing going into a corner compared with a driver who's coming in on a very smooth arc or as smooth as he can having braked as late as possible towards a geometric apex you can see how much additional road the car is actually having to travel and if you multiply that by typically what 10 to 12 to 15 corners per lap and then by 60 laps that's quite a lot of extra road in which the car has to travel the second one and this this perhaps is less obvious is that a short corner driver of the ilk of Max, let's talk about Nigel Mansell, good example, compared with Nelson Piquet when he was at Williams, is naturally going to find himself in positions of forcing the issue when it comes to overtaking, because he's naturally going to be turning in earlier and going down the inside of the more classic late apex driver, as Mansell did several times when he passed Nelson Piquet with Nelson not really knowing what was happening. And it would be a similar thing if Max and Sergio Perez were racing closely with one another in a position to overtake one another, you'd see very clearly that Max was naturally, even without really forcing the issue, wanting to force the issue, would naturally be turning in earlier than Sergio Perez. And you often see, you, you sometimes see it in, in other categories as well. And you think, wow, that dry, that's a good way of judging a driver who's got a feel for a short corner transition zone. It's a way of comparing it. You, you best see them with the other guys out there on track. Third advantage is that by extending the straight, probably by a length or two, maybe, maybe by three lengths in some situations in some corners, Max is in reality giving himself a bigger sweet spot because what he's doing is, as I said before, he's definitely making sure he's got the load on the front. And when he's braking, he's braking fairly square into the transition zone. He's got quite a lot of margin for error. Very rarely do you see him locking a loaded left or right front or left or right rear. Whereas the driver going on the classic longer later turn in is his, one of the things he's got to do in order to maximize his style is to break absolutely as late as possible. And that makes him of course very prone to error. 
braking as late as possible is a really difficult thing to do in a Formula One, in any racing car, because as I say, the variables are changing all the time. The tires are getting hotter, the grip's changing on the track surface. That's why you see very, very late braking drivers eventually succumbing to the problem by locking up an inside front, flat spotting a tire, or worse, maybe going off on the outside of the corner. And then they have no recourse other than the following lap to go a little bit slower and leave a little bit more margin. So they're actually backing then away from the physical limit of the car. So there's much less margin for error if you're driving in that way. And Max's style actually gives him a much greater sweet spot to get the car stopped. That applies also to cold tires, colder tires, harder compound tires, hard tires in cold conditions. And it gives him the versatility that we saw in Barcelona where he twigged that in order to get some temperature into the fronts, he would just need perhaps to load on the front a bit more and just go a little bit wider into the corners and do a little bit more of the classic thing and move his transition point a little bit later. And he had that scope because he was starting from the right baseline. But if you're starting from the baseline of brake as late as possible, turn in with the car on the absolute limit, get onto the power as soon as possible, where are you going to go if that isn't working for you? And that's, uh, and that's another great thing about this. You're driving inside an envelope that you can expand as the track conditions are changing. Another, another thing, and I, I don't think this is talked about very much, is that Max's style of driving, the short corner style of driving, because he's breaking to a feel zone, if you like, rather than to a specific visual marker, it makes his style of driving much more adaptable to all the different types of racetracks on which we race, whether it be a street circuit with very defined closed peripherals or whether it be a very flat open circuit, it doesn't make any difference to a driver like Max because what he's not looking at any of that. None of that is important to him. The only thing he's looking at and feeling is where that rotation zone is that he wants for that corner. That's what he's looking and feeling. Whereas a long corner, classic driver, geometric apex driver is always going to be looking at potentially a braking marker but beyond that it could be a wall it could be a could be a white line on the road it could be a spectator it could be anything and those things change and when you're used to driving with lots around you and you suddenly go into a flat open circuit it can actually be quite difficult for that sort of driver to be as good to be as precise as he is with closed environments so i think it gives max much more versatility from track to track to be able to drive at exactly the same level. And the other point, which is a great thing for engineering a car, and which is one of the reasons that we often talk about how good a Max is at developing a car, or a Lewis, or potentially a Charles, if he hasn't got the politics to deal with, is that you can do what Max does, even if the car's got a bit of understeer, or is neutral, or has got a bit of oversteer. All of that stuff is filed away into the rotation zone that you're trying to achieve and you still maximize the car more or less as much as you can in a straight line at the end of the straight and the beginning of the next straight whereas a driver using a long classical corner with a geometrical apex braking as late as possible is always going to want to have a front end that works to do that with understeer is almost impossible as long as you've got a front end that works then Obviously, you've got to deal with the rear and then the mega car control drivers, the Ronnie Petersons, maybe even to some extent today, the Carlos Sciences, maybe the Yuki Sonodas, really good car control if the back end's a little bit lazy. They can live with that so long as they've got a front end. But they need that, that plug front end in order to make it work. Whereas with Max and his short corners, or with Michael, or with Alan Prost, or with Nigel Mansell, even if they had a bit of understeer or oversteer, it didn't really matter that much. They could live with it. And that is why and how they could live with it. Jackie Stewart, another good example. Jim Clark, another one. So, yeah, you know, they it, 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 it takes away the drama of a bit of understeer, a bit of oversteer, a bit of neutrality in the car. Of course, you need a certain amount of grip level and you don't need bouncing and you don't need all the things that, say, Mercedes and McLaren have been fighting over the last couple of years. You don't need that. And you need a higher grip level and you need your top speed. All those things are still still there. What I'm talking about is a handling characteristic that a driver typically might talk about if he's a late apex classic driver. Let's say late apex, geometric apex, classic driver. If he doesn't have a front end, he's going to come in and he's going to complain about the understeer. But Max 
will complain about understeer if it's in the, if it's preventing him having any sort of rotation at what he knows is it knows is his rotation zone but if not he's going to live with it he's going to live with it the way he's living with all those dynamic forces that he's constantly managing in that rotation zone you can be absolutely sure that the straight max verstappen generates the next straight from his transition zone begins much sooner than the straight that a carlos science would be looking at and that's the difference that is the biggest difference it's not so much into the corner it's from the transition zone or the geometric apex onwards and the next straight is much shorter was significantly shorter for a classic late apex driver so there we are that's max verstappen and his short corners i hope that made sense i'll be doing lots of live streams no doubt along this subject but in the meantime i'm going to start producing some more videos comparing the styles of drivers within teams as they're coming into rescas which was a really good litmus test of where a driver would like to position his car whether or not he was braking into a transition zone or whether he was just breaking into the entrance of the corner for a nice wide exit get on the power as soon as possible that was all very clear going into rascas at the monaco grand prix this year so i'll be doing some of that analysis but in the meantime it's short corner max who is the star of this video and i hope that gives some idea of what he does and why he does it